normal that my father still hits me even as an adult? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. When I was a kid and I got in trouble, my dad would hit me. I always knew to expect it, so it wasn't a really big deal. But of course, I would do my best to stay out of trouble. Sometimes he would use a belt and sometimes he would slap me across the face. The slapping was the worst part. From the ages of 10 to 12, I didn't really get hit because I never got in trouble. When I turned 14, things started getting rough. I wanted to date boys and my dad was not having it. So his form of punishment sometimes was even taking food away from me. This happened on two occasions when I was 14 and I almost ran away because of it. I know most of you are thinking that my mom should have stepped in, but my mom was pretty afraid of my dad too. Sometimes I feel like my parents have brainwashed me into thinking that what my dad is doing is fine. The sad part is that I'm now 20 and my dad still hits me from time to time. I do have to say my father has always been there for me. He's provided me with a great life and a good education. And it's not like he would just hit me out of nowhere. It was only when I got in trouble and for specific reasons. But I do think he needs to stop it because I'm 20 now. Here's where things get really messy. I just got engaged and my fiance hates my father. Follow for part two. Is it is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult? Now that I'm 20 and engaged, I told my fiancé about what my father did. Like I said, my father wouldn't just hit me out of nowhere. He would only do it when he was punishing me and for specific reasons. But my fiancé loathes my father. He thinks it's abuse and that it wasn't a normal thing for me to have to endure as a child, especially as an adult. And I've only come to realize that what my dad is doing is probably wrong because of my fiancé. Before that, I never had anybody in my life tell me that what my dad was doing was wrong. But here's what happened. My fiancé and I were cooking in my parents' kitchen. My dad must have been in a really bad mood because he comes into the kitchen and says, if you don't clean up this mess, I'm going to show your fiancé how I slatter you. My father had never shown that side of him in front of my fiancé. But as soon as those words came out of my father's mouth, my fiancé turned to him and said, you will never put your hands on her again and my dad said that's my daughter and i can do whatever i want my fiance asked me to leave with him and i did my mom called us and begged us to come back but my fiance said no part three is up. is it is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult? After my fiancé stood up to my dad, we didn't speak to my family for about two months. That's when my fiancé asked me to go to therapy. And I did. And that's when I found out that what I really needed to do was fix my relationship with my father. Because he had always punished me physically, I held a lot of resentment towards him. And my father being very antiquated, he thought that he was doing the right thing. Now let me clear a few things up. He only hit me twice when I was an adult. Once when I was 19, I got a bad grade in one of my classes and he flipped out. He slapped me across the face and told me that that would teach me to do better. The second time was right after my 20th birthday. I had gotten into an argument with my mom that really wasn't such a big deal. My mom and I worked things out, but my dad thought it was inappropriate that I spoke to my mom like that. Was I very disrespectful? No. But to him, it was completely unacceptable. So he hit me once with his belt. My fiance is refusing to invite my parents to our wedding. And to be honest, I kind of agree with him. Ever since stepping away from my parents, I have so much more confidence. I'm also happier in my relationship because I'm getting to be myself. And I'm not afraid that anyone will punish me. But I do feel guilty. I want to reach out to my parents. I'm not sure. What should I do? Story time about how I got my ex toxic best friend jumped. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And like any of these toxic best friend story times, she was super jealous of me for literally no reason. She would literally try to be better than me in everything. Like when I did a sport or a club, she would join immediately right after. And it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to join my best friend. No, it was, I'm going to join so that way I can show her that I'm better than her. For example, in sixth grade, I was captain on the volleyball team and she decided that she was going to try out her sophomore year. She played it off as if she just wanted to try it out, but then I got announced captain and she was pissed off when she heard that. She literally blocked me on everything and she came from a super wealthy family, so she was used to getting whatever she wanted. And my whole friend group would literally tell me, you need to stop being friends with her. She's toxic. She's this, she's that. The only thing that stopped me from being friends with her was the blackmail. Part two about how I got my toxic ex-best friend jumped. So like I said, the only thing that was stopping me from not being her friend was the blackmail that she had. Every time that I pissed her off or even just randomly, she would be like, oh, I'm going to send this out. I'm going to expose you. So I had an exposing account on Instagram where I would expose people in my class. It got banned, but she DM'd the account, the blackmail. Little did she know it was literally me who was running it. Obviously, I didn't post it, but I showed one of my friends and we kind of made a plan to get rid of the blackmail. So my birthday was coming up and I was going to Disney and my mom said that I could invite two friends. Originally, I wasn't going to invite Tessa, but since I had this plan, I invited her and one of my other friends. On the third night, my friend and I decided to take our plan into action. Tessa was sleeping, so I went on her phone and I went and deleted all the pictures. Life for part three. 
part three about how I got my toxic ex press friend jumped. So like I said, on the third night, she was sleeping. So we went on her phone. I deleted all of the blackmail that she had on me. And I even went a step further and screenshotted all of the that she was sending back and forth with older guys. And these guys were way older than her, like way older. And I sent them to myself and deleted the text off of her phone. Fast forward, we drop her off at her house. I stay over my friend's house and we decide that we're going to post everything to my exposing page. And we also came up with a really good idea. Why not send this to Tessa's parents? So we sent them to her parents. And guys, when I tell you this exposing page had so many people on it, it really did. Somebody was like, OMG, like, please send a face reveal. Like, I won't tell anybody. So what did I do? I sent a picture of Tessa and that person posted it to their Snapchat story. Fast forward to the first day of school. We're outside for gym class and three girls beat her. Am I wrong for not telling my boyfriend that I had been a surrogate before we got together? I, 28 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 29 male, for a little over two and a half years. When we began to get serious, I told him I didn't want to have kids. I wasn't interested in that and it wouldn't be fair to string him along. He wanted kids, but we talked it over and he decided he could live without. Things were fine until we visited my family a few days ago for my dad's birthday. My boyfriend saw some old pictures of me when I was 20 and clearly heavily pregnant. He was upset and asked me what this was and thought I had a child and gave them up. I explained to him that my older sister and her husband had been struggling with fertility and she'd had several miscarriages so I offered to carry the child for them and my 7 year old niece was the result of this. I in no way feel maternal love towards her. She is their biological child and I've never felt that I was anything but the oven for her bun. I never brought it up before as I didn't think it mattered and it was so long ago that it wasn't really anyone's business. He, however, feels differently and when we left, he told me that I should have told him and said how it wasn't fair how I'd be willing to give my sister a child but wouldn't even consider having one with him. I got upset at there is a big difference between carrying a child and raising a child and told him as much. I told him I was sorry for not telling him but honestly, I hadn't felt it was his business and it had been years before we got together. I then reminded him how he had been the one to say he could live without children as I'd warned him long ago. He is still upset with me. I honestly didn't think I did anything wrong. I'm 17 and my little sister, 15, is turning 16 in November. We are complete opposites. I'm more into partying and hanging with my party-loving friends while my sister is into reading and she doesn't dance. She's in love with musicals and that's all she listens to with the addition of some popular artists. She has a nice friend group. They're okay to say the least, but they pretty much have the same interests as her, except that they're more bent when it comes to music choices. My mother threw me a sweet 16 and it was amazing. It was held at a big place, lots of music, food, gifts, and full of my favorite things. My sister the entire time sat on her phone in the corner and only got up to eat. She only started talking to people once it was time to pack things up. My mother recently asked my sister what she wants for her sweet 16 and she said that she wants a party. My mother didn't respond and I overheard her and my father last night speaking to her last night about how she can't have a party. My mother thinks that she isn't a normal teenager who would usually enjoy a good sweet 16 party. In my mother's words, I'm not throwing a party for you to sit around the entire time. At that point, I'm entertaining your friends, not you. My father is siding with my mother, saying that he supports her interests, but it would be best to put the money into something else instead of a big sweet 16 party. I could tell my sister's excitement about the party died down for a little bit. This morning, I saw her on her computer in the living room looking up sweet 16 parties and cheap places to have them at. I asked her why she was looking at the pictures and she said that she wanted to compare them to the sweet 16 I had, since she wants the same one too, but cheaper so our parents wouldn't be mad about how expensive it'll be. I told her that she wouldn't have the same things as me because she isn't a normal person at big events, even if it's about her, and that she's better off just hanging out with her friends at a mall or something to get the expenses out of the way and our father said that I shouldn't have said that to her. I understand that sweet 16s are a big thing, but it wouldn't be wise to spend so much time and money on an event like this where she'll look bored. I suggested she just go out with friends bowling or to their houses and she screamed at me and slammed the door in my face. I'm just trying to help my parents and her out.